fantastic invention, man. Isn't it good? Uh, it's been very good, yeah. Wonderful. Very good. Very good. Oh, good, good to see everybody here. the United States about four or five times. Wow. Eventually ended up in LA and uh, <laughs> a, a lot of jobs later, you know, between being a bartender, a truck driver, etc., etc. I eventually got a start and I did a lot of theater. And, uh, and then um, I read for John uh, in Salt Precinct 13 and uh, kind of went from there. Um, I think my very first performance was when I was five years old. I was in a play, a Sunday school play called The Littlest Angel. And I played The Littlest Angel because <laughs> I had the loudest voice. <laughs> and I really liked it. It was, it was fun. Um, it was, you know, the memorizing the lines did not seem to be a problem, even though I, I couldn't really read. Um, my mother told me to memorize the lines. So that was it. I, I, I got, you know, I, I, got, I kept getting parts and plays because I had a really big voice from the time I was a really little kid. You know? It reached for the Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, that's, it just sort of progressed from there, and it was something I could, I could do pretty well. And then I, I, I started organizing my friends and trying to get them interested in the theater. So I, you know, we were staging plays in my garage and charging our parents like 25 cents to come see these plays. But I, I wasn't very good at getting other kids to cooperate, you know. I, because they get bored, you know, they want to go home. And, and it was just endlessly frustrating for me. So I was really glad to discover that, you know, when I was older, that there was a certain discipline attached to it. That there were other people who really liked to do it as much as I did. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's, that's sort of how it happened. Awesome. Yeah, I have a, a kind of different story. It, um, my little sister was pretty famous. Yeah, she died almost uh, a little over four years ago from cancer. And uh, you guys ever watch Happy Days? Uh -huh. Joni Cunningham? Yeah. That was my little sister. Oh, wow. So what happened with her and I was, my parents put on a Christmas party when I was nine and she was five. And an agent came from a friend to friend to tap the show up. And there were six kids in the family, but this agent wanted my little sister and me. So, my parents said, yeah, absolutely. You know. So uh, we got a commercial together during a Christmas, a Christmas uh, commercial. And we played brother and sister. And this uh, uh, director named Lee Lacey, who was really well known for high budget commercials. And he threw us, he, he, he flew us to three different states just to find the right hill with the right stuff. For like a 60 second commercial, I think. It, was, it only played once, but it played the first time how the Grinch stole Christmas. Well, I hated this. I hated it. I hated it. So I said, no, I'm not doing this. Yeah. And Erin kept going on. And she did the same thing. My mom helped her with the lines by reading it, reading it to her. She's not like, 
right here. Yeah. And so uh, I was an actual athlete from it. And so I was being scattered by the, the California Angels at uh, second base. But I tore my knee up. And then, oh, and, oh yeah. Uh, I had no idea now what I was going to do. I, I, I literally, this is no joke. I went to college for a month and a half. And I hated it. <laughs> so she asked me, since I was nine years old, to get into. <coughs> Keep, you know, to keep going. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Well, now I'm screwed. I don't. I, don't, I have nothing yeah, else. No I have nothing else to do. You know, uh, I was a train break, so I said. So I, I put my tail between my legs and went to her, and I said, because uh, she was still representing my little sister. And I said, hey, uh, Yeah, I want to try this. You know. And so she pulled out a sprint and inside of the you know seam. And uh, she said, yeah, you need a, you need a workshop, bro. You need to go get trained in this. <laughs> like, okay, okay. And that's how I got into it. So Halloween was my first, my, my first part of it, so. Yeah, that, no, that's great, great. The next question is how, how did Halloween come to an, into your lives? Oh. Um, my agent uh, called me up and told me about, about the part, and I, I, and she told me it was a horror movie, uh, low budget, Play some psycho and genuinely curse thing. And uh, uh, back then, you know, it's not uh, it's not like now. Back then, it was like kind of sketchy if you did a horror movie, it, it, and, and really a bad one. Then the directors and producers were uh, uh, you, you said kind of sold out, didn't you? Uh, really? So I said no. And uh, but and I didn't even know who genuinely curse was. But then she she said that. Uh, Donald Cousins was in it, and that's the reason why I went on the internet. Because I was a big, big fan of it. And, uh, and that's what happened. And then uh, I got blessed. And there's no other word that, that fits. You know. Yeah, that's, that's so interesting. Crazy, right? Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> and, you, and on the interview, uh, 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 John was there, and uh, the producer. And he was clean cut, he was a producer, you know, an early month. And he points across the room to John. <laughs> and John's got tennis shoes and jeans and a t-shirt. And I came from Paramount to suit for well, happy days, you know what I mean? Right. And I'm like, oh my God, really, dude? <laughs> Are you serious, man? And, uh, but and he's chain smoking inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, you know, they, Nancy, they never, nobody knew, not my agent knew until I got on set. I had to wear a mask. Uh, I didn't know. You know, nobody told me. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> it's pretty casual in those days. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, yeah, because I, the reason I got cast is because I was a friend of John's. You know, and, and he had cast, given me a part in Assault on Precinct 13. Which is where I met Chuck. But it, a movie that I was also the the uh, costume mistress on, right? Was in charge of all the costumes, ironing Chuck's costume. <laughs> and and I was also the set dresser on that nope. show. Wow. Cause that the budget on that show was like around fifty thousand dollars. So everybody wore like six hats in order to get it finished. Um, and it was exciting because it was the first big feature film that, you know, that somehow we were shooting it in, in Panavision. All the money went to rent the Panavision camera. Right? Oh, really? Yeah, and everybody else was just like making it all happen. Because John was obsessed with Panavision. He knew that no matter what, the movie would look really much better if it was in Panavision. Yeah. And so, so, so that's how that happened. But, um, and then, you know, it was it just, he really liked this idea of working with the repertory company, of not having to go through this big, long casting process and, and, and just like, have the same actors come back and play different parts. And, and so that's how I got cast. Um, and, you know, it's the same when he's writing the script, it just everybody, everybody was named after people that he already knew. It just, it was always whatever was easiest, right? Like, like your last name, right? Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Lewis, her name is Nancy Lewis. Right. Mr. Clever. Clever. 
Right, and Ben Trainer, you know, was yeah. one of his best friends in college. Yeah. So, yeah, and Tommy Wallace was also a character in it. Everybody, you know. right. it was just what what's convenient, what sounds good. Let's not sweat the small stuff, and that's kind of the way John made movies. You know, and, and it worked for him. It worked. It it, it really did, because he was always you know on time and under budget. And yeah, very meticulous. I mean, he was really interested in in the shot making. Yeah, and the and the panic light. The panic light came out. It's like, wow. Okay, now we can really make movies. Yeah. Uh, I understand it quickly. Have any of you seen Consultant in Precinct Thirteen? Yeah, it's a pretty interesting movie. And uh, I I know when when the young lady got. Shot that. that was a shock. I mean, way back then it was like, holy cow, you know. But it was quite a quite a good film. She did a little bit of everything on that one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that was my first project with John. And from then I, uh, he brought me in to Halloween and Sheriff Brackett. And working with Donald Pleasance <laughs> was a real treat. You know, he did something, I'll tell you. <clears throat> But uh, wonderful to work with an actor like that. And uh, that's really about it. The Halloween is, was, we had no idea it was going to really take off, did we? No, no, it was really sort of what Tony was talking about. The, how, the, the genre of horror film didn't have the, the kind of status that, it, I mean, wasn't even film noir, you know? It was all the Yeah. So it was a brand new thing, it, you know, and um, I, nobody really had, had an idea, but, but it, was, it was so different and it was so fun. Yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, and it was just in the right place at the right time. Absolutely. Yeah. The perfect storm, why not? Yeah, perfect storm, I guess. But who knew, right? <laughs> Until the, I'm, so the reviews started coming out, and then it was like, what? Really? <laughs> yeah. um, I love the characters in Halloween. Everyone has a very distinct character. You never have two of the same. I personally, I do relate to Annie because I too spill things on myself, <laughs> get stuck in windows, and lock myself out of places. So uh, Nancy's my spirit animal. I've said it before. Um, and I have like crazy curly hair, so there's that too. <laughs> but what did you guys think of your characters? Like when you were like delving into them? Well, I, I loved my character because basically I was playing myself <laughs> at that point. And that was that was easy and and you know Deborah Deborah was so much fun. I mean she was sort of in charge of making it real. You know, as as the writer, and and uh, so we were just making a lot of it up as as we went along, and and um, I and Jane, Jane Lee was was uh, really enthusiastic, and and she you know she just had this wonderful approach. She was very professional, from the you know. From the get go, yeah. But but she was a lot of fun. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And and so we were just having a good time being okay, you know, being these silly high school valley girls, right? Yeah. <laughs> basically, what we did. Yeah. Everybody sort of uh, pitched in, yeah, from the leaves to the you know. Scattering them around and gathering them up. And, uh... and the rotten pumpkins. <laughs> yeah, because we shot the movie in April. Right, right. And you guys painted the, 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 the leaves were painted brown, right? Well, it look like fall? we had a few bags of leaves from the flower market, you know, fake leaves, but yeah, yeah. we, we had to spray paint a bunch of leaves and, and you know, we, we got a bunch of pumpkins from somewhere. <laughs> somewhere up in the Central yeah, where Valley. Yeah, where'd you find them in April? Where would you find them? I know. And then, of course, you'd have a, like a 100 degree day and the pumpkins yeah. would just be rotting. Yeah. 
But anyway, it, it's stuff like that. It's like, okay, what what can we do that's really going to scare people and make it look good? And you know, yeah. <laughs> it was just like everybody got together and said, let's make a movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And what a movie it was. What about you, Johnny? Thoughts on Michael? Yep. Uh, well, no, I, I hate wearing a mask. You know, I only have to do it one day. I, I still hate wearing the mask. Yeah. Um, the only way to breathe through the ears didn't have any other holes to breathe through. So, but my more important than that, um, when I heard you guys are here when you do the Q and A, I was really, really honored, really honored, because the commitment you guys put into your your roles and everybody else that was on that movie and even behind the scenes, that's a big part of why it became what it became. I think. And it's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of production value on, on the screen. Yeah, and yeah. You, can, you can tell everybody's commitment, all the actors and actresses, their, their commitment. And that's what, it, that's what hit me when I first saw the movie. I went, wow, this is cool. I mean, they were in, they were into it. You know, so I, was, I was really impressed. Still, I, you know, uh, I, I wore a mask. I don't know if I didn't have too much. Wrong, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, do we have any audience questions, sir? You kind of answered my question already, Nancy, because in your roles in the Carpenter films, you had this kind of sarcastic snarkiness, <laughs> which was strangely attractive. <laughs> <laughs> but you did friends with John. Was that, was that you bringing yourself then to that? Pretty, you wanted pretty that? Pretty much. I'm not as cynical as I sort of was back in those days, so, you know, where I was actively looking for a way to make a cheap, sarcastic remark. So, that was just a, you know, a defense, right? Um, but I got over that after I had two kids and, yeah. you know, <laughs> grew up a little bit. Yeah. But it worked. It works in that film, you know, I, I think. And, and uh, I, I appreciated it that John appreciated that aspect. But, you know, it really wasn't, I, I really didn't think of myself as being sarcastic. Do you guys know, you, you, have, you, you, have, you it takes someone else to point out to you like what kind of a person you are and what, you know, I didn't really realize that. I thought I was just being funny and clever. It's my daughter. <laughs> you know, you're a real smart ass, you know? Yeah, you're just a real, real smart ass. <laughs> but Charles, I have a question for you, if you don't mind. Pardon me? I have a question for you, if you don't mind. Oh yeah, sure. Do you think Sheriff Brackett knew that Lori and Annie were smoking that joint? <laughs> the only question that comes up when we're, we're in London, they ask that question, and I go, you know, I had a cold that day. You know, I couldn't really sit in that life. <laughs> My daughter? Now, you, you couldn't have that scene in a movie today. No. No. Pod is legal now. Yeah. Is it yes. legal in Indiana now? No. Not yet. Michigan. In Michigan, right? I mean, it, it it was it was a nod to that mm -hmm. that thing that um, was illegal, but that everybody did. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, now it just wouldn't have the same effect at all. Right? It, 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 you, you did it really coolly because you made it look like you, you're a veteran when you spoke. Thanks. <laughs> True to my hippie roots. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? There, in the front. Um, so obviously, like Halloween is a huge classic now. How long did it take for you guys, as the actors in it, afterwards to realize, like, oh shit, I'm part of a cultural phenomenon. <laughs> like I'm part of a huge movement. Well, it took a little while, uh, not a great deal of time, but it started rolling, and then it started rolling and rolling and. I don't know, what about you? I don't know, for me it was it was the rise of the internet. It wasn't until really the, the 90s when, you know, because I, I went off and had a whole other life. I had two children and I sort of stopped acting and, and kind of forgot about the fact that I'd made this movie called Halloween until one day uh, somebody got my phone number and called me up and asked me if I had wanted to do a radio interview. And I said, about what? <laughs> and he said, Halloween. And I said, what? You know, really? And, and that, was, so that was an inkling, right? 
And they were interested in all these little details. Like, they clearly watched this movie carefully. And, and then, um, I didn't think about it that much, but I think the internet had an, an incredible impact on, on the people who liked how we were discovering each other. This, this, this whole sort of fan base kind of coalesced um, because people could communicate with each other so easily and suddenly it was just happening. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and then it was in, what, 2006 or something like that when, when uh, somebody said, you know, there are these conventions. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. What do you think? Do you want to go to one? I said, really? People show up? Like, yeah, they do. Man. They really, really? And, and so, but it, I really think it was a phenomenon that was propagated by the internet. Yeah, I, I got in at 2005 too, so at the very end of 2005. Mm -hmm. I, I, he, this guy said, you, you want to do... I'm sorry, you want to do... You should do a horror convention. People have been looking for you for you know, 10 years, whatever you said. But I said, or convention? <laughs> it was a four word. <laughs> 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 so I had the same thing, man. So he, 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 he told me what happened. I'm like, you're out of your mind, really? <laughs> you, you serious? Really? But for only one, how it happened for me was I was doing, like Charles said, when he, you know, side jobs, you know, bartender, waiter, and all that. And I'm going down Sunset Boulevard to the freeway to get back into San Fernando Valley. And I'm driving by Westwood, this real famous little town that was in the, uh, uh, once upon a time in, in, uh, in Hollywood, uh, where she goes to see a movie. It's a, it's a date night type of town. And really nice theaters. But anyway, I'm, I'm driving down, my own business, and I see this billboard, it says Halloween. It was about six months after, after we finished, or eight months, or something like that. I, I was like, what in the What? <laughs> what? And it's got the Michael Myers face and everything, you know? It was a mask on. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. And then it just, I mean, it was playing everywhere. And that's how I, I, I found out, yeah. yeah. Halloween 2 came along. Yeah. Remember, and uh, my daughter here, we opened it up, and. Yeah, that's when I regret it that I've been killed. <laughs> <laughs> I got relieved and then somebody else stepped in. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's wonderful doing these conventions and, and seeing the, the fan base. How many people love these movies? And there's a lot to be liked. You know, I, I haven't seen too many after four and five and six. But uh, the one I just did, Halloween Kills, I, you know, it's interesting. I, I never got killed at the beginning. So they, somebody came up and died. Let's bring the old sheriff back. And you know, I came trotting back. And the uh, first night of shooting was a long night. And I hadn't realized that that's, that's when I was going to get killed. And I went, oh boy, here we go. But I, uh, it was a pleasure to come back and work, you know, even though I'm, the secret is don't get killed, you know, try to hold off, you know. But it was come, nice to come back and work. And uh, so much for that one, and onward and upward, yeah. so to speak. I saw more hands. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I was married to Tommy Lee Wallace. Ah, How about that? That's easy. <laughs> I love that. Oh my goodness. That's, that's cute. So, and, and, and he was really happy. He was really excited because he was going to make this movie. Um, and, and it wasn't going to in, involve Michael Myers. The, they were, the, the whole idea of the production team really wanted to try this idea of, of branching out and using the, the whole season of Halloween to tell a different story. And that was the, that was the initial plan. That was that better series. Might have been, you, you never know. But, but uh, so I was excited and I wanted to be part of that. Um, so that's how that happened. I love that. Yeah, I love it. 
I really do. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, it's, it's a movie that, that, that didn't do well at the box office initially, but, but it has a big fan base now. Yeah. yeah. And there's actually a, a book, Tommy's writing a book about it, the whole experience of it. I'm so excited yeah, for that. It should be out in the fall. Thank you, Nancy. Yeah. Can I, can I say one thing? To a nod to Tommy Lee Wallace. Uh, you know, besides me uh, strangling Jamie Lee, his sink, I don't know how many people know this, but Tommy Lee Wallace was the editor of Halloween. Yeah. That's right. And a set, set decorator or? Set a production designer. Yeah, but he did the closet scene, which I think is the most terrifying, one of the most terrifying scenes in horror history. Uh, that's just me. But objectively, that's a badass scene. And Tom Lee Wallace did that. And from when he told me, he said that John wanted him to do it because they would have to replace those wooden slats in the, in the, in the closet. So he, if they had to do more than one take, he would know where exactly to hit it, exactly the same spot two or three times. So they could save money in those wood slats. That's what he told me. <laughs> Sense. <laughs> <laughs> I see a young man right in front of the question. What was your favorite holiday? What, what, what's the fav their favorite holiday? Yeah, before Halloween. Okay. My favorite holiday? I think my favorite holidays, I, I, I don't know for sure, but I think it might be the 4th of July, actually. Oh, wow. um, and that's just because I like barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, what's your favorite holiday? Oh, my favorite? Yeah, the young man wants to know. I don't know, I've been drifting around so much. Uh, it's, everything's a holiday to me. I, I, don't, know. <laughs> I don't know, I, I guess, uh, I'm trying to think, I don't say Christmas, but it's not. Uh, Probably New Year's. Oh. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> Halloween is mine, and I'm not being corny or anything. Just being honest, it's always had been since I was a kid. Halloween is my absolute favorite. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. When uh, Lester comes in and he's barking and he's getting on your nerves, where did you guys get the dog from? Did you rip the dog, or was it someone's dog on set? Or God, that's a good question. The dog. In in Halloween. In Halloween. Oh, that's a great question. I've never heard of that. I'm sure we must have had an animal trainer. You know, I, I'm pretty sure that that dog was a pro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Central casting, right? That, that, that's something that, that we included in the budget. Right? <laughs> I saw some more in the back. Yes. Yes. So, in a way, you probably kind of already answered the question, Charles, but. What was it like to reprise your role as Sheriff Brackett in Halloween Kills? What was it like when I to, to reprise your role oh. in Halloween Kills? Well, it was it was strange because I, after Halloween Two, I sort of disappeared, you know. And uh, I thought, okay, that's fine. I did a lot of movies with John, and you know, worked quite a bit. And then I got a call and said, uh, we're thinking about bringing you back. <laughs> I'm going, really? That's great. <laughs> yeah, so I just came back. I started off as a sheriff. And then I I guess I wound up to be a security guard in the hospital. I said, it works. It works, you know. It was great. It was really great. And, uh, and I'm all done now, so we all bit the dust in that one. <laughs> Holy oh, that that God! But isn't there another Halloween movie coming out? Yeah, yeah Halloween ends. Halloween oh. ends. Yeah, I don't know what that's going to be, but uh, it's never going to be over. We all know that. Yeah, it's never going to go what 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 will the one be after Halloween ends? Halloween returns. Halloween begins. That's yeah, right. <laughs> what happened to Michael Myers? It's not going to end. It's never going to end. Somewhere. The, the ghost is going to come Halloween. back. The ghost of Halloween. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know how um, how accurate this is, or if it's still true. If it was at one time, if it's not anymore. But I hope that the Akad Estate owns 
Michael Myers, and I've heard that it's in the contract that he can't die. I, I, I heard the same thing. So, like, yeah, they kill him, but they bring him back. I don't know if it's true, but I heard So, it. or, you know, I don't know if it changed, but, so that's what I've heard. So, so kind of knowing that, now I'm like, it's never going to end. He's always going to come back. He doesn't die. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going off road because I don't know you guys know more than I would about this. I don't think so. Was, was it the name of the movie? Was it the name of the movie a Babysitter Killer at first? Yes. That's what I heard. But they they, they couldn't do it too graphic or something, something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I have big memory of that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I don't know if it's true or not. Just that's what I heard. Yeah, I saw that. Someone said that on one of the special features. Yeah. I did not. I think they used it in other countries too, where Halloween wasn't really a thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. All right, we got more. I know you had one. I had yeah. one. Um, I've seen a lot of the the movies Donald Pleasance did in late in his career, where he has very small parts, but he just really gets into them. But here, he actually had a good part. What was it like? Did you, did you work with him at all? Uh, how was how was that? Uh, I'm sorry, Chuck, Donald Pleasance. What was it like to work with Donald Pleasance? Oh, I, I didn't oh. work with Donald Pleasance. I mean, he comes with the actor. Hey, come up and he's start his eyes and go, this guy's whacked. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, uh, but he's wonderful to work with. There's so much giving that he gave, and uh, it was easy to work with a professional actor. Yeah. Right? He was done everything. We were just in just north of London. Right. And uh, we, we talked about it, and I said, thank you all for sending down pleasance to us, you know. Quite an interesting actor. I, I enjoyed it. There's no doubt about it. And uh, John and himself and myself, it all all worked well. You know, it was a you know, yeah, wonderful it was experience. Great. It was really great. But I was totally tongue tied <laughs> around Donald Pleasant. I because I was a big fan of, of uh, the Great Escape. Oh, me too. You guys me ever too. seen that movie? Oh, I yeah. Did. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, as a kid, I just sat down. Donald Pleasant had the greatest scene. I, I'll never forget. The blue, blue eyes, and he's so carefully like making himself maybe the last cup of tea that he's ever gonna get, and he's just so careful and devoted and obsessed with making that cup of tea. And so when I met him in real life, it, it was I was so starstruck. I, I couldn't even speak to him. Yeah, me neither. Because I was a big fan of him, just like you. Uh, I, 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 I just could not. I just could not believe he was in this movie. I just could not believe it. I just, this guy is just a classic British actor. What is he doing on this movie? You know? yeah. And uh, I was, I was nervous as hell. Nervous as hell. Uh, yeah. And I don't get. It's good to hear. <laughs> we got a few more. No, we do. Yes, sir. Um, uh, I've heard before Tommy Wallace talk about how the mask, when they you know finally found the mask, how scary it was even in person. Um, did people on set ever feel the same way about being around um, Nick in the mask, like getting scared of him or anything like that, or was it a lot easier knowing that he would be in the cast or would not be? No, no one was ever scared. We we were we were having so much fun trying to make you scared. Yeah. You know, that was basically it. But we did try on several different versions to come up with what we thought was the scariest. I know that there was a clown mask there. Yeah, there were there were lots of, of sort of ideas. Tommy and and Craig, I think, Craig Stewart, they went down to what was that shop on Hollywood Boulevard? Yeah, Tommy told me the name of Hollywood Costumes or Hollywood. Like but anyway, they went and, and collected a bunch of different masks, and the one that worked was the William Shatner mask. <laughs> Which is like, it's like featureless. That's what makes it so scary. Yeah, they made it even more featureless. Right. They, they did it, they modified it in some way, I remember. But you know how it's like suddenly you see it and you know it's right. That's, that was sort of the effect, right? But I don't think anybody was like suddenly surprised because you know when you're making, you're on a set making a movie, there's no sound track. 
the way there is in a movie, it's not the image that's scary, it's the sound underneath it that is really gonna like get the scary. So Suspense. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's it's what the it's what the music does and the, and the sound effects. You know, it's that combination. Because when I first saw the rough cut of Halloween, I didn't think it was scary at all. I thought it was like, oh, this is so boring. But then <laughs> I went to the opening, you know, with the music cut in, and I, I was just like, oh, yeah. And and I I didn't watch it for years after that because it was just too scary. I mean, I can't believe you watched it when you were eight years old. And I loved it. I wasn't scared, uh, but I always approached horror from a, a really weird place. I was always very intrigued by practical effects. And so I was always trying to figure out how did they do that? And I really loved the doll movies, like the child's play and the puppet master, because even more so I was the animatronics of it all, and like the stop motion when they used that. I was like, how did they do that? The eyes. and. Yeah, so I always approach the horror with the effects standpoint. A couple of scenes in some very few movies really yanked me out and got to me and gave me the willies. Um, but uh, yeah, so it wasn't, I, was kind of, I felt kind of disconnected from the fantasy of it. I mean, kind of unfortunately, I would like to go along for the ride, but I was always kind of trying to pick it apart. Oh, well, it's interesting because I, I never started picking apart movies until I, I I took a college course in about movies where, where we sat and analyzed them after we watched them. And that was when I began to realize when the magic, when the veil started to drop. Yeah. Um, because when I was growing up, we didn't have all these things that you have now, which are bonus reels and yeah. how the thing gets made. And you didn't see any behind the scenes things. And it was all just magic, yeah. you know? And, and and so I, I really, it, it wasn't like theater where I, I, from a very tiny age, I knew the whole thing was a construct. Um, so so I, I, I never started to question it or figure it out until I was actually making movies myself. And I only did that with the horror genre. I wasn't doing that with action films or any other films. so interesting. You were trying, probably trying to protect yourself. Maybe. From being too scared. <laughs> Uh, you're talking to someone who was afraid of just watching Ghostbusters. <laughs> 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 Can you make her felt the same way as far as I understood? So what was it like working with her? Felt she the same way how? She watch the, the reels back too, from my understanding. She couldn't watch Terror Train or anything. No. No, she... Her interest lies somewhere, some, somewhere else. She's like, I mean, she doesn't like being scared, right? And, and um, I don't know that we really had that conversation. Um, what, the, what was it like working with her knowing that? I, I'm not sure that I did know. I, what I'm saying is I'm not sure I did know that. Oh, okay. You know. <laughs> so, what was it like working with her? It was just fun. It was plain old fun. She was this kid, and she, but she was a real pro, and, 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 and uh, you know, Deborah and John kept the set really this wonderful atmosphere, great place to work. And, and uh, so I really enjoyed meeting her and getting, getting to know her, just fooling around. It was fun. We have time for one, possibly two more. Yes. So there's, you have Halloween and then it has all the sequels, but what about the remakes? It's mostly for Tony. Um, you know, Rob Zombie did a remake and changed the whole backstory of Michael. What did you think of that? Well, uh, I, I didn't see it. You mean you Rob Zombie? No, I haven't seen it. No. Neither have I. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to force myself at some point to watch it. At some point. But uh, uh, I, I just, you know, why, why mess with a, a, a perfect piece of art? And you're an yeah. artist, also painter, you, you right? And you can't do it twice. No, I mean you just can't do it twice, and that's how Halloween is. But you can make some money when you do it if you do it, and if you're Rob Zombie, you know you can do it. Well, I'm just with all these 
one and two and threes are above making money. Yeah, absolutely. And usually the, the first one's the best one. What about you? Any thoughts on that? Well, I think, I think maybe part of the intention was to use CGI for the first time, just to see what would it be like to remake what has now become a classic movie and use all these new special effects that are available because of, it, of um, computer technology. I think that had something to do with it and, and, and just to, um, you know, kind did you, of... Did you see it back then? No, I haven't seen it. But to, to use the, you know, to, to update the music aspects of it and the sound effects and 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 the style, which is much more graphic, you know, thanks to that whole comic book scene, right? The whole so there's a lot of reasons why the style that Rob Zombie chose worked for that era, right? Um, and maybe in ten more years there'll be, or maybe even sooner than that, there'll there'll be another remake of the original 1970s version, but using all of the, whatever will be hip mm -hmm. 10 years from now. Yeah, I'm a big fan of it, don't get me wrong. You know, his music and, and his movies, but not that. Yeah. Not that. <laughs> well, guys, thank you very much. You're welcome, it's thank you. It's been a pleasure and an honor thank you. for all of us. Thank you. Yeah, let's do it.